I'm going to show you how I built this 1.7 kilowatt solar system that is so simple, even I could do it. The reason I say 1.7 kilowatts instead of just saying 1700 watts is because, well, it's because I think it just sounds more impressive when I say it that way, even though it's exactly the same thing. My plan for today was for it to be a sunny day. I was thinking a sunny day would be good ambiance for doing a solar panel video, but the weather had other ideas. Looks like it's going to be a cloudy, foggy day, but maybe that's a good thing because we can see how much power these can produce on a cloudy, foggy day. As nice as these look on this side, back here around the back side is where all the good stuff is. I guess I could have tidied up a little bit back here before I made a video about it. Tuck these wires back up here so an animal or something doesn't snag on them. But I want to show you this. That's why I left it out. Yeah, I left it out on purpose. I already made a video about how I attached the panels to these frames, but I didn't show the rest. This is just a temporary setup because I'm not exactly sure where I want these to be yet. These stumps just happen to be in the right place at the right time. Then I put in these T posts, wired them on, and it is super strong. But this is just a janky temporary setup. The reason I didn't want to do anything permanent now because I wanted to wait until the shortest days of the year, which are right now, to see exactly where the sun comes up, where it goes down, so I would know exactly where to place these. What I've learned from observing, observing, from observing where the sun comes up and where it goes down is instead of being there, they need to be over here more. They're getting blocked by those trees in the very early morning. Then later in the morning, they get blocked by this pine tree. If I move them up here, they should get a little more morning sun and they should be out of the shade of that pine. These are things to consider when you decide where to put your solar panels. This setup for mounting the panels, I wouldn't expect you to do it my way. You could make a rack out of wood. You could do it all kinds of ways. If you're halfway handy enough to think you can do your own solar system, you should be able to figure some kind of structure to put your rack on. That's a pretty simple thing to do. For a halfway semi-handy person, I'm sure you can figure that out. I won't go into the details on how I propped these up because this is just a temporary setup you probably won't do it this way. Hopefully you won't do it this way. I'll show you how I have these wired. These are each 425 watt panels rated a little over 40 volts. It's 170 feet between here and up there where I use the power. I have this cable I haven't buried yet to conduct the power from down here to up there. To run power over a distance, it helps to have higher voltage so you can have less amperage. That way you can get away with a smaller diameter cable. Simple way to increase the voltage is to combine panels in series. I combine these two in series and those two in series. Wiring panels together is simple. They come with these MC4 connectors. MC4 stands for, I don't know what it stands for, but they are simple. You can unplug them, plug them right back in. Solar panels come with two wires. Have a positive and a negative. Off this panel, we have a positive and negative, 425 watts, a little over 40 volts. To combine them in series, we take the negative from one panel, attach it to the positive from the other panel. Now with these two combined, we have two wires left over, a positive and a negative. We've combined these two panels into one. Now instead of 425 watts, we have two combined into 850 watts. Now that they're in series, instead of being 40 volts or a little over 40 volts, they're a little over 80 volts. You know, I did say I was gonna make this simple. We're already getting into numbers, wattage, voltage, a little early in this video. I think it might be still a little early for that. Maybe we need to have a honeymoon period in this video before we get into that. Even though the wiring to connect these panels together is quite simple, it's actually the most complicated part of this whole setup. That's how simple the rest of this setup is. For now, let's follow this cable up and I'll show you the other end of it. After you take a look at the rest of it, see what we're working with, then you can decide if you want to make the commitment to learn about how to wire those up. This cable is 6'2 direct burial. 
meaning you can directly bury it. 6-2 means it's 6 gauge wire. That's the diameter of these two wires. 2 means there are two of them. That's what we need, one for positive, one for negative. It runs 170 feet all the way up to the other end. Mr. Obvious strikes again. I haven't buried it yet because I need to move the panels and I'm still not sure where I want to run it up here. The infrastructure here is still a work in progress, which then runs all the way to this shipping container, which I've decided to make power central for now. I thought I might have to drill a hole in the container for the wire to go through, but there is a gap between the floor and the bottom of the door, which is sealed by this flexible rubber. The door can close over the wire without any problem. From here, it goes all the way to the end. I told you it goes all the way to the end. At the end is where all the components are, the charge controller, battery monitor, on-off switches, fuses, wire terminals, LiPo 4 batteries, which I haven't hooked up yet. Because instead of hooking up all those gadgets, gizmos, and paraphernalia, I decided to do it the easy way. The end of the cable is bypassing all those gadgets, gizmos, and paraphernalia, going right to these power blocks. Got a positive and a negative, which makes a clean way to attach wire terminals together. I connected the negative side and the positive side to this cable, which runs to this thing, which it plugs right into. We'll wheel this out into better light so we can see what we're dealing with. Some people call these portable power stations. Some people call these solar generators. Some people get really irritated when people call these solar generators. What I call this is, is something that has become an alternative to all of this, plus all the wires that will be needed to connect all these components. And it makes a nice seat. Yeah, comfy. For someone who doesn't want to have to figure out how to source, put together all these components, this unit has all the components already put together. It has the batteries, it has the charge controller, fuses, all the switches, AC outlets, DC outlets, USB ports, puts out up to 3600 watts and 3,800 watt hours of battery storage. To make this a solar unit, all you have to do is take this included plug with MC4 connectors on it, connect them directly to your solar panels, you're good to go. In my case, I had to run a distance, so I had to come up with some wire to go in between there and here. Otherwise, you can plug this directly into your panels. These power stations are so simple and convenient, but it is well known you'll get more bang for your buck if you buy the components separately, put it together yourself. You can get more watt hours of storage if you buy the batteries separately and all the components separately. But these have come down in price so much that it's not that much more bang for your buck anymore. These are expandable. You can buy add-on batteries to them. They've got ports here to plug those in. You can expand the capacity of this up to 11 kilowatt hours or 11,000 watt hours. Either way, it's a lot. That would be a whole lot of these batteries. I know just what we need, one more YouTuber going on and on about portable power stations, as if we don't already have enough of those. But there's a reason why we do it. They offer to send us these units to try them out. We like them so much because they're so useful and so handy, we can't help ourselves. It's just the way it is. That top number is how many watts the panels are generating on a partly foggy morning when the sun is starting to come out. 420-ish watts. This is what it was trying to do earlier before the sun was quite coming out as much. 180-ish watts. So let's go back down to the panels. To go the portable power station route, really all you need to do is take the MC4 connectors on your panels, take the cable that came with that power station, plug it directly into these, and you're done. 
mount your panels on something so they will point toward the sun, connect them together with the plugs, plug that into your power station, and you're done. You've got solar. Now I'll get back to the most complicated part of this, which is plugging the panels together so you can plug them into that power unit. In my case, since I have four panels and I have a distance to run them, I want to get more voltage. Even if you don't have a long distance to run your wire, having higher voltage does have advantages, including not having to have wires that are as big between here and the charge controller. As long as your voltage is not too high for your power station or your charge controller. So I'm going to connect two together and two together. Take the positive from this panel, connect it to the negative on this panel. They're all labeled. Now we have these wires left over, which are a positive and a negative. I did the same thing over here. I connected the positive and the negative together with that little MC4 connector, which is the connector that comes at the end of your solar panel's wires. Then take the positive from these panels and the positive from these panels, connect them together into this little device where you can plug two wires in and it turns it into one. Then take the negative wires from these panels and the negative wire from these panels, do the same thing. Connect them together with this same type of plug that turns two into one. If your portable power unit is close to your panels, you could just plug it into this one and this one, and you're done. But in my case, I have this distance I have to run from here to where I need the electricity to be. So I just made these pigtails that go from MC4 connector to bare wire so I could splice it into the long cable. But if you have a much shorter run than I do, and it's not far to go from your panels to your power station, you can buy the cables that already have these MC4 connectors. You can plug one into the cable in over here, and then the other one into your power station, and you're done. I also put these fuses in here just for fun. One for these panels, one for the other panels. Since you've gotten this far into the video, and I've almost tripped myself, you are one of the troopers. I'm going to try to explain what's going on here with the voltage and all that gobbledygook. Solar panels typically come with relatively low voltage. You can usually find a plaque or a sticker on the back that has all the specs. This one is rated just over 40 volts, up to almost 50 in certain conditions. The voltage will vary with the amount of sunlight they're getting, the temperature, etc. Compare 40 or just over 40 volts to household current, which is 110 volts. 40 volts is relatively low. The lower the voltage is, the more amperage you have to have to get the same number of watts. We want to increase the voltage so we can reduce the amperage so we don't have as much power loss inside the wire. We can put more watts through a smaller wire. We connected these ones in series, which doubled our voltage. We connected these ones in series, which doubled their voltage, but we connected those panels to these panels parallel, negative to negative, positive to positive. Just over 80 volts here, just over 80 volts here, connected in parallel, it doesn't change the voltage. It stays 80 volts all the way up to the power station. Voltage stays the same, but when we combine the two, the wattage doubles. The end result is, based on the ratings of these panels, we have just over 80 volts and 1700 watts going into this cable, which varies based on sunlight, temperature, etc. That power unit, that portable power station, will take anything these panels will put out. It's rated at, I think it's 180 volts. It's either 150 or 180 volts and 2000 watts. That's one of the things I really liked about that power station. It has up to 2000 watts of solar charging capacity. I could talk more about how wiring it in series, wiring it in parallel, changes voltage, changes wattage, how all that works, but I said I was gonna keep this simple. If you're going to be using the portable power station with solar panels, just look at the output of your panels, the total output of your whole array, make sure the voltage and the wattage does not exceed the rated input capacity of that power station. As long as the numbers on these 
are smaller than the numbers on that, you just plug it in and it works. If you still don't understand series and parallel, I suggest you look up a diagram, how to wire series and parallel. Maybe a diagram will help you out. I also have this smaller power station. I cannot plug this directly into those panels because those panels are too powerful for this one. This one will only take up to 500 watts. I have a 400 watt portable panel that I used to plug this in to charge it up. But ever since I got the rest of this solar outfit, when it's time to charge this one up, I just plug it into this one, right into the AC outlet. Both of these are the same way. You could also plug this one into an AC outlet to charge it. One of the great things about using these portable power stations is they are portable. When I'm here, I can plug it right into those stationary panels. When I want to go somewhere, I can unplug it, take either or both of them with me, along with the portable solar panels I have. I have a 400 watt one I could plug into this one and a 200 watt one I can plug into that one, which is great in the summer when there's plenty of sunlight. Last year when I spent all summer at the ranch, I didn't have this. I had to pack a bunch of this stuff with me, set it up when I got there, tear it all down when I was ready to leave. If I go back there this year, I'm just taking these. Since I do have all these batteries and components, I do plan on setting them up for a more permanent setup here. I also want to wire an on-off switch between the panels and this, along with a better setup for these things. That's just temporary. Then I'll have the capacity of those batteries plus this to get me by in case we have a couple weeks of stormy weather where the sun doesn't come out. Right now, AFRI is having their biggest sale of the year on both of these. These are normally $2,599. Now they are $1,599. Those are normally $1,399. Now they are $799. I haven't added up the cost of all of these components and the batteries so I can compare watt hour with those to watt hour with these. I think it's still cheaper to buy all the components, but at this price, not much cheaper. And with this, you get the convenience. I'll put a link to both of these in the description along with a discount code, which is good until the end of December 2024. Now the sun decided to come out, now that I came down here to finish this video, the cost of solar panels has come way down. These panels are 1700 watts altogether. For $1,500, you should be able to get panels equivalent to this, plus all the components to go from here to your power station if you build the mounting rack yourself. 1700 watts is not going to run a normal household by any means, but it can run a lot of things. For an off-grid situation like this where I don't use a lot of electricity, this goes a long way. Now the sun just went away. Regardless of how you would decide to go, portable power station, DIY solar, I think having something like this would be great to have around just for emergency. In sunny weather, these can run a lot of things, but even in cloudy weather, something like this could keep your freezer going or your refrigerator going, keep your communications charged up, telephones, computers, Telephones. Do we even say telephone anymore? We call them phones, not telephones. Portable power stations and DIY both have their advantages and disadvantages. With DIY solar, where you put all the components together, you have more flexibility. You can build it the way you want. If one component dies, you can replace that one component instead of having to replace the whole unit. I know there are a lot of people out there who would love to have solar. They would love to build their own but they just don't want to have to deal with all those components. Just figuring out where to get them, which components to get, how to hook them together, always wondering if you did it right, if you're gonna blow something up. I understand a lot of people don't wanna deal with that. For those people, I think those power stations are a great option. For people who like to tinker around with all these things, DIY solar is great. I'm not here to say one is better than the other, I just think one is better for some people where the other is better for other people. Now the sun's trying to come back out again. I'll put a link to those power stations in the description. Thanks for watching. Oh, I'll do another video in the future putting all those components together.